Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. Definitely, I think, going to be worth it. Except contract. So we got field 14. I'm going to actually go to field 14 next, I think. So I'll just... Actually, he's going to be down that end, isn't he? So if he's going to be down that end... I think we will head down. We'll go on down here because field 10 is right here. So it might be better if we do field 10. So we'll move. We, we will relocate to field 10 just down here as that is the next field that we're going to be doing on our list. Come up this way and cut in here. Quick sharp like that. Right, you can stop there a minute, and I'll go back to you. You've just got a little bit of a run up here to do, and then that's done. We'll run to field 10, and we can get that one underway. So I've got two contracts that I can cash in on now. I got 11 and 18. We're done on those. So there's 6,000, 7,000 euros that we have got coming in. We got 1,500 euros at the moment. I am hoping by the time we do a whole load of this, um, a whole load more of this, we'll be able to make enough money from these that we'll be able to afford to buy the other machinery that we need to do our grass job. Now, the main point with the grass job is that we're going to need we're going to be making silage with it and then we're going to want to move the silage afterwards so making the silage is relatively straightforward we don't need anything now apart from one rake we need a rake of some kind and we're going to want a forage wagon now the raking bit is going to be easy, that can go on with the hired help and I should have actually the hired help engaged right now doing the mowing. I've chosen not to purely because I want to do one more round around the outside of the field before I start doing that. So I'm going to get this one here just started off and I'm going to start him off manually, I'm going to go across the top here, I don't think we need to worry too much about the bottom end. But I am going to do this top end up here. So we will start like that and off we go. So we're just going to do down this side of the field. Just the, the angled part of the field is the only bit that I'm going to worry about. And then once I get to the straight edge over there, I will just let the hired help carry on and go and do the rest of this field. It should be able to go and finish off the rest of it without our intervention at least that's what i'm hoping we can turn properly at the other end down there there's no reason that he won't be able to like he is pretty good at being able to turn against the trees and the boom on this thing is quite short the only thing that would improve this sprayer is if we could have some kind of tank extension on it because it is a bit tedious having to constantly refill it I realise that a small sprayer like this, you would kind of expect that, but it's still a little bit tedious, isn't it? So, there is that to just sort of keep running through. Right, if I go there and then press H like that, he should carry right on. Okay, so now I can go back to this bad boy, start you up again and start you up again, and I'm going to do one more pass around the outside edge of the field, and then I'm going to find a position somewhere on our field, and I'm going to set the hired help going, and we'll see how it works out. Uh, but yeah, I would love to have electric an electric tractor, and see, I was talking about the, the massive great big excavators, and how some of those are actually electric excavators, and I don't know if such a thing exists for a mini digger, for the small scale ones. If they do, I would definitely want to try it out. I would definitely, definitely want to try it out and see what it was like. I, I, I know that some people don't like the idea of electric tractors or electric machinery in general because they think it's not going to be very reliable. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about servicing it. Um, I mean, the main thing for me, though, with servicing it is... The reason that that wouldn't be any kind of concern for me is that my actual mechanical expertise when it comes to uh, tractors is fairly limited anyway. I, I'm not much of a mechanic, so it's not really going to be any different to me whether it's an electric tractor or 
a diesel tractor, my ability to repair the thing doesn't magically improve or diminish either way. It's, it's, it's genuinely not going to make any difference. So on that, uh, sort of in that respect, it, it really wouldn't make any difference at all. And if I was to ever like get my own little place and start doing stuff, I would either have to learn how to service and repair a diesel or I'd have to learn how to service and repair an electric tractor. And let's be honest... I don't know about the rest of the world, and I don't know how much you guys know about prices in the UK, but if I'm ever in a position where I can actually physically afford to go and buy uh, a small farm with 20 or 30 acres, I absolutely will also be in a position where I can afford to pay somebody to come in and service the tractor on a regular basis or repair it if it breaks down, right? Um, it's... Probably a dream that will unfortunately not get realised because of the price of land in this country. It is obscenely expensive, land, anywhere in this country. And so the chances of me ever actually being able to afford something like that are pretty slim. But on the off chance that one day I am able to do it, you know, whether I win the lottery or whatever, uh, yeah, it would be a case of I would probably get someone else to be doing the servicing on the tractors because I, I'm not a mechanic. I, I'm not very mechanically minded and I'm quite happy to admit that. So it's, it's not a strength. I would rather focus on the things that I can do and um, I enjoy, like actually doing the driving, and then I can get someone else to do the repairing. And I know about, you know, general servicing and greasing the machine and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not like completely helpless with it but when it comes to the machine breaking down and then fault finding and repairing it i haven't got a hope not a hope at all i i i really don't i'm i'm completely and utterly useless when it comes to something like that so i get someone else to do it i get someone that actually knows what they're doing that that to me would make the most sense now there are some rough patches around the edge of this field and as we go around i'm noticing that we are sort of picking up on some of these little rough spots uh, I think that eventually we would want to plow this field. I mean, we got these bushes that are, like, sticking up in the middle here and there, and I don't know if that's, uh, because, like, I mean, if we have a look at the map a minute, if we go in here, we have got an area here that is plowed, which suggests that it is actually a full-on field. See, it needs lime, it's plowed, there's a little bit of fertilizer around the edge. You can see here that we haven't actually gone into the edge on some of these bits. From where we're picking up on the um, the the other like the the fertilizer in that, where we you can see the bit of fertilizer there from the mowing, uh, but generally speaking, we are covering most of the field edge now. So it's, I'm thinking that we just set the hired help going, and then if there are some other little strips that are left behind, we can just go round the edge afterwards and tidy those up. So we've done twice round. I also need to, I know that I've got the tank up there, but I want to get this one going. I want to have this one running in the background the whole time. So I'm kind of thinking it would be better for us if we start down here. Because we know the way that hired help works. I don't really want to go up and down the hill. This one, we can go across the hill. It's going to be longer runs. It would actually be faster. So in order to run this one better, the other thing I want to find out is... Oh, nice. It does actually have it off the ground. It doesn't interfere with anything. Right, I'm going to lower it down here and run back down to the bottom of the field. So that if there's... I, see, I don't think we're on ploughed land right here on this bit. I think the ploughed land goes up a bit higher. Uh, but there is ploughed land there that's got those shrubs right in the middle of it. And there's little patches here and there, I've noticed in the field, that are a bit rough. So when we come to ploughing it all... Well... Well, see, yeah, I don't know if we're going to actually plow up the whole thing or not. But when we do come to doing some plowing here, we are probably... See, right there? Oh, no, I have now reached the edge of the field. I think I've reached the edge of the field. So I want to go over this way. I think that's kind of the edge. Let's, let's have a look here. And get rid of that one. See, right there, I've got a bit there that I haven't touched the edge of the field, and I've got a bit there that I haven't touched the edge of the field. So it's going to leave some bits, and there's a bit there, and then there's a bit around there. And that's kind of the roughest areas that we're in. 
is I think it's about here. And I need to like I'm looking now. I've got to look at the mini map to see which direction everything lines up. So that would be kind of the straight line that we want. Should be about here. And I don't know if I'm on the edge of a field here or not. Okay, and you can see the angle there that he's wanting to take means I need to move down this way a bit more. And then hired help. Right, there is the angle that we're going to be taking. So that's kind of looking north that way. I'm thinking this way because you're know, basically I'm looking uphill, aren't I? So that's the angle that we're going to take, and we're going to let it run round. And the way that this one leaves a little bit of a swath in the middle, because I think it's actually got that. Is that actually a setting on here? Let me just turn off the hired help a minute. Uh, fold, lower, turn on. Right, that's not a setting on here at all. I did wonder if maybe it was a setting. Like, you can see... Let me jump out a minute. See right there? Oh, no, that's the height that it cuts at. That's the height that it cuts at. I did wonder if maybe that was like a, a bit of a, a swathing motion that it potentially has with it. But no, it, it that's not a swathing thing at all. It's nothing to do with it. The class mower does have that option where you can leave it like that or you can leave it spread out. But that's only the, the side wings. I'm looking at this... And I'm thinking that we don't need a rake. A rake is going to be rather small anyway. So it's not going to be raking up a vast quantity of material and putting it all together. And this one is leaving this swath over a three meter spread into an area narrow enough to pick up with any kind of pickup reel. And I want to have a look in here a second at the rakes. The pickup reel, the wind rowers right in here. See, that one right there is three and a half meters, about the same width as the mower. This one's smaller than the mower. I mean, it's a little bit wider than the mower, but not a lot. Uh, that one there at 3.4 meters. So, yeah, I'm kind of thinking that we just leave it like this and we, we let it carry on. And um, and then we'll, all we've got to do is get the other, what do you call, the... Um, the forage wagon and we just take it from there i have done a lot of mowing for uh, farms that i've worked on for doing silage and you literally just go through the mower and leave it in swaths like this fairly close together like the, the swaths aren't very big but we've done that for silage and that's all we've done we haven't had anything extra there haven't been any more uh, like we haven't gone through and rode it up or anything like that it, it is literally just like this and I think that could work for this as well it means that we don't have to fork out for a rake I mean a rake isn't very expensive admittedly if we go and have a look there again the wind rower that we'd be looking at is about 15 that that would be my choice would be that one possible well we are maybe that one but this one I think would be the better of the um of, of the ones that we've got available here it's the widest pickup as well and very easy. It does require 100 horsepower, but I reckon our tractor would probably... 74 kilowatts. I think our tractor could probably do that one. But I, it doesn't need to. That's that's the point. It doesn't need to. We can just focus on the forage wagon instead. Now, I'm right down the bottom end of the field. So, instead of driving that really slow tractor all the way up here, I'm going to drive the Speedy Gonzales machine all the way down there and we're going to load it all up there so we go racing off down here being careful of course not to drive into the lake i mean alpine lakes are very beautiful but i don't want to go swimming in it with my pickup truck and i'm just going to go right in behind this one and i'm going to load it up like this because the crop is i was going to say the crop is fairly it, it, it is growing along quite a bit, actually. I'm, I'm just wondering if maybe um, it would be damaging the crop to be driving on it. Right, well, that's all I can do with that one. So I will start it up and set it on its merry. And then I will take this one. We're going to drive back now to the dealership. And we're going to get ourselves another tank of herbicide. And then I can bring that one back and I can park it up on the edge of the field again, waiting, ready to load that bad boy up. We got our mower is now underway. He's doing all of his mowing and 
it's going to be a while getting all of our field done there. And that bit is not a problem. Like that, that's that's not going to be any kind of an issue at all. The bit that's actually going to be a bit tedious and time-consuming is turning all of that grass into silage. We've got to get it into the clamp, and then we've got to roll the stuff down. And I mean, I don't think the rolling is going to be too much of a problem. We can, we've got that tractor. We can put the front weight on it, and we can roll it a bit like that. Uh, so we will, we should be all right with being able to do the rolling. It might, might be an idea to look at another tractor, but I don't think we're going to be in a position to be looking at another tractor until we have spent a bit of time and made this first lot of silage. Then after that, we, you know, maybe things will change. So I want to take these straps off there, and I want to open the back of the pickup. And yeah, I have been told off for. Um, doing that, um, how much was it? Pallet in here, it was 2,400, I don't have 2,400, I'm going to need to go into the contracts in here, we've got field 11, let's collect that one, we've got field 18, let's collect that one, and now I have 8,000 euros, I can go in here and I can buy a herbicide tank. So I can buy that bad boy right there. I'm going to buy another one so that I've got it here at the store. While I've got... Actually, let's buy a third one. While I've got the money right now, I will buy another one because I suspect that we're going to need it. It didn't just... No, it didn't. Right, that's okay. Um, some, it, it jumped a bit and I got very confused and worried there for a moment, but it's absolutely fine. So I've got a bag of fertilizer on the back of the pickup so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unload that one and then I'm going to get two pallets of herbicide onto the pickup at least I'm hope no I, I you know what I'm not going to unload that one because I'm not going to be able to reach it I literally I'm not going to be able to get to that one at all I'm not going to be able to get into it so we're going to leave that instead and we will come back over here and we will get this single pallet right here and actually I do want to approach it from the other side slightly I don't know if it's square or not all right well we'll try it from this side we will come in here lift that one up rotate it round and boom there we go right Let's put this one onto the back of there. Easy does it, though. We've got to go careful. Help A is stop work unexpectedly. Well, you're going to have to wait for a minute because I'm still loading up the herbicide. Let's bring you back into here. Gently does it. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem with the lack of depth perception in the game. Um, let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> And we'll bring that one in there like that. Let's just move it around a bit. This is definitely... This this is hurting the back of this truck. That I guarantee you that that didn't do the long good. Right. I'm going to bring you back over here. We've got seed right there. And I'm going to stop there like that. Right. And then I can come over here. I can fold up the back of the pickup. And that fit beautifully. I mean, yeah, we've got... This massive, great big weight of the stuff is 2,000 litres, so that's two, that's two tonnes of herbicide that we've got in the back of this thing. He sat down a little bit. I'm, I, I'm thinking maybe it'd be a good thing that we didn't stick a second one in there, because I'm not sure that the suspension would have survived. I'm pretty sure that would have been the end. It would have been the demise of the pickup truck. We'll have to wait and see if it's going to actually survive this treatment. Um... So anyway, yes, I, I would like to try an electric tractor. I, I absolutely would. And if it's anything like the way that it performs in this game compared to other tractors, I have been told, actually, someone did say that the electric tractors are pretty good, that they do hold their charge fairly well. Um, but I, it doesn't seem to be very many people have had any experience with them yet. And I think at the moment they are definitely geared towards the small tractor market. I don't know how they would perform with larger tractors. And But as I was saying about the excavators, some of the world's largest excavators are run on a power lead. Like you literally, they just plugged in an extension cable somewhere, run it out, and they're running some of the world's largest excavators on these things. So I know that running it... 
electrically rather than with a diesel engine or something like that. It is definitely possible and it does work and it's uh, it, it's quite effective. It, it works. It, it absolutely works. I don't believe there's any difference in performance to the relative size of machines, for the electric ones versus the uh, diesel engine ones. Um, I mean, there might be. I, I haven't really looked at the I haven't looked at it in all that much detail. I just know that they're there and things that I've watched and read about and so on, they, they don't indicate that like there's a lot of difference between them. It's mostly what's convenient for the people that are running the machine because sometimes it is... Go over to the... We'll just have a look at this one a minute. See, we're leaving it. There's a little tiny bit down there. But generally speaking, we're doing a great job. This is a big field. It's the... It, it, this is going to take a while. Right. Uh, I'll load you up. There we go. I'll start you up. And I'll bring you right back like that. And I'll send you on your merry. And then I will go to this one. And I will drive it off the field. And we'll park it up over here. We have got two tons on the back of this pickup. Chances are it's going to have sunk right down into the field there and not really have been highly effective, but that's fine. Um, I would love to just try one of these out. Anyone that's got any experience with these, let me know. Do they actually make them with larger tractors? What, what, would, what are they like, you know, and what would they be like? Considering what we know about the really small ones here, is it possible to get a larger tractor at the moment with an electric engine on it? Or is that still something that is being worked on? And I know it's being worked on. I know that they are definitely working on it. Um, and, you know, in some situations, having an electrically powered machine like this would be more beneficial to... Uh, farmer of any kind well not any kind uh, more than in some situations it would be more beneficial to the farmer than having a diesel one diesel's not always the easiest and cheapest thing to go and get if you just have your tractor and you go plug it into the power grid that's that's going to make a big difference that's that's going to genuinely make a big difference right it did touch the ground there just briefly is not ideal but i mean it's it, it it's it's running and it's, it's doing fine and it's going up the hill i mean this one does have a top speed of 22 for the mower and it is half that speed going up the hill but it is powering up that hill and doing a pretty good job with it so overall i would say that this is a successful mowing that is going on here let's zoom out a little bit as much as we can We've got a lovely big expanse of grass that is already laid down on the ground. If we had another tractor, we would be able to start gathering that up. There's some little patches that's been left out over there that would come into it when we do some mowing. If we were to do some mowing, that, that could come into it. So we got this like little bit here. It's going to take a, a bit to like get through this short work here. And then once it's done, all of the short work in here... We're then going to start doing some really long runs up and down the field. Right into there. Off it goes again. But unfortunately, I think we are going to have to wait until we've done the entire field. Because we don't have the money to go and buy our next machine yet. The next machine that we're going to need, because we don't actually want the wind rower at the moment, and we're going to forego the pleasure of having a wind rower, at least, at least to start with. I mean, I may decide to change my mind on that one. But for the minute, 30,000 euros is our cheapest option. And that's a 16,100 litre capacity. We have got this one here. There's 20,000, but it's another... Uh, almost 15,000 euros to go and buy and I'm kind of thinking that we won't do that and then you got this one up here it's 26,000 but there's no way we're going to pull that one we would definitely struggle to pull that one this one here is kind of within our range uh, we just need to get the 30 grand that we're going to need in order to be able to pull the thing and that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge I mean, don't get me wrong, I think we can do it. I absolutely think that we can do it. Let's go and check this bad boy over here, see how he's doing. 
If he's turning around there, I'm just wondering if I should... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch him go up to the end of the field. Actually, you know what? Because I don't think he's going to get right to the end of the field. I'm going to go here like this. I'm going to let him just fill up again here. And then we shouldn't need to get any more herbicide for this one. And then after field 10 is done, we can drop straight down into 17. Because I'm pretty sure he's going to be once up and once back again. I mean, he might not be. He might actually need to do more than that. But we will see. So if I load that one up there. And then I press H, and we're away straight up. No, we are going to go up. We're going to come back down, and then we're going to go up again to do one last little run. And let's have a look at the contracts list again. Despite the fact that it is cheaper, we do make more money if we go and take these jobs and we just do them ourselves. I'm actually thinking that we should get some of these and, and do them... Like, uh, taking the machinery. I've got fertilizer here, and I've got a little bit back at the yard. Field 13 is that one there. It is a fair-sized field. You can still make... No, I, actually, no, we won't. We won't lease the machinery. We will leave that for doing our own. I've got... <laughs> I'm just starting to realize the scale of the operation that I have set in motion right here. Look at that. Look at that right there. That is the scale of things that we have got lined up in here. This is obscene, I think, is about the only word I can use to describe that. This is obscene. That is, like, I know that we're only doing short runs at the moment, but that is going to take a while. Uh, I want another tractor. I need another tractor. If we can have another tractor running it, then we'll be all right. The, the the issue at the moment is that we definitely don't have the money for another tractor. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this one over this way and take it from the side of the field here. Like that. And he's going to run down there, and then he'll do the little strip that's left up through the middle as his final pass. He might, actually, be able to get all the way up across the field to do it. I, I don't quite know. I am going to have that one. And I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm just going to drive it over to the side. If he does run out, it'll be up near where the tractor is now. That's going to be his spot for running out, if he does run out. It'll be somewhere about where he is here. So I'm going to stop here with this one, and that is where I'm going to wait. And next on our list in here, if we finish up there, it's not really going to... So we will do 17, and then we'll go into 14. The big bad boy for the finish, right there. And the money that we got lined up for these, we've got 14 is 6,500, 17 is 3,200. 17 is actually smaller than field 10. So it's not going to take long to do those. Okay, let's go back over this way, and how are we looking in here? I've got 270 euros left. I can't go and get another little tractor like we've got uh, doing the spraying, because, well, I don't currently have the money for it, but also... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.